Good evening, everyone. So excited that you're here tonight. Thank you so much for walking through the weather uh, to be here. Um, mo most of you uh, know who I am. I'm Nan Carney DeBoard, Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics. Mo in, in the context of these, should I s stop the recording? Happy shits. Um, I uh, am also a Denisonian, class of 80, former student athlete as well. So I have to tell you, we are so incredibly excited about this panel. Um, if you spend, we're, we're gonna spend the next uh, 45 to uh, 50 minutes together. Um, if you aren't inspired by uh, this group of I individuals, it, it's just not gonna happen. They are incredible people. I really want to thank um, Jamie Scott, as you know, as our head women's tennis coach, for uh, leading uh, this event tonight, along with Sarah Lee, who's our senior woman administrator, and Gail Murphy, our head women's uh, soccer coach. In uh, a brief history, in 1987, um, National Girls and Women in Sport Day was established. And so each year we try to just recognize uh, the heritage. 1987 wasn't that long ago um, for some of us up front. Um, but uh, m more importantly, or, or historically, I guess, uh, going a little back in time, uh, you may or may not know that it, it wasn't until 1982 that the AIAW, which was the previous women's um, NCAA was disbanded and women's <laughs> athletics then joined the NCAA. So once again, not that long, considering 10 years prior to that was the year 1972 and which many of you who have taken either sport law or our history and philosophy know that that was the passage of Title IX um, in terms of equity and uh, provision for, for sport and athletics and how how that really played out. So we've got some stories to tell. Most importantly, um, I want to give you all of the time in the world to hear from our shining stars. So in 30 seconds or less, we'd like you to tell us your name, your year you graduated from Denison, and why Denison. So who has the mic? I do. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. I'm Marcy Stout. I have a quick question. If they do hit the 30 second buzzer, do I get a glass of wine yeah. from the wine? <laughs> I just want to know if I need to go over. Uh, once again, take off the, the, uh, the button. Uh, it happens to say wine, please. I have no idea where that came from. I just need to clarify the rules. <laughs> All right, so I am Marcy Stout. I'm so honored to be here. I was class of 1994. I played club soccer and club, rug club rugby. And why I wanted to be here and why Denison, my best friends for life. So I've known them since I'm 18. We have not missed one reunion. Every single year we get together and we have a fantastic time and it's a legacy of best friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't we hold the applause to after each question? That might work. We'll keep okay. it going. Hello? Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm Ray. I graduated in 2012 and I played basketball under the great Coach Lee up there. <laughs> Um, why I came to Denison, so I have two best friends that I've known since middle school and we literally all went to middle school, high school and college together. Wow. He played football here and she became like a super great athletic trainer. So that's why I chose Denison. <laughs> uh, I'm Melanie Lott, class of 2004. I was on the track and field team. Um, uh, why Denison for me? So in the yearbook, in your high school yearbook, you may have seen, you know, or done yourself the place where all the seniors put, um, you know, your goals. Mine literally says, go to college, run track, and be happy. Um, so, but, but, um, so Denison was a place where I could get a great education, um, participate at a high level um, in my sport that I was interested in, and really the deciding factor for me was when I came for my on-campus visit and just how uh, welcoming everyone was. The teams, my, you know, that my coach, um, but, you know, it was just a place where I knew that I was going to have great relationships. Hi. Heather Harris, class of 94, I graduated with Marcy. Um, 
The reason why I chose Denison, I played, I wanted to be a two-sport athlete. So I wanted high school to have the same impact it had on me in college. I didn't want to go to a college to be anonymous. I wanted to go to a college that, that I could give impact to. So at Denison, I played two sports. Only for one year did I play basketball. Sorry, Sarah. Um, and it is one of my regrets, not going to lie. I'm still friends with everybody on that team, like literally as of today. Um, Second, I was able to be in a sorority. I was able to have friends all over the place like I did in high school. Nothing really changed for me. I was able to really move myself into just a greater athletic um, and social environment at Denison. Um, it was really important for me to play close to home. I grew up in Cincinnati. I wanted my family to be able to come close and watch me. Um, so that was why I chose Denison. And I came at 8 a.m. on a random Wednesday. It was before Birkenstocks were really cool and there was this girl that obviously was kind of, well I don't know what sororities are like now, but she was definitely a Theta um, when we were there. And, um, and she was super cool and she was wearing a long skirt and I just said, this is the place for me. And my mom said, you're a girl that wears pearls and paints her nails and still plays sports. Like, are you sure this is right? And I'm like, mom, my heart and soul are here. I want to be at Denison. It just was a place that I felt compelled to go to. Hello, I'm Allison Nissen, and I played club uh, rugby just like my sister, Marcy. I graduated in 1989, and I will say that by, before I even got to the top of the hill on my first trip to Denison, I told my mom I was going to go here. Mm -hmm. It was a gorgeous fall day, absolutely no clouds, not like today where it's <laughs> raining. Maybe my opinion would have been different, but I just knew this would be the place for me. I wanted a nice liberal arts education. I wanted to be able to spread my wings in a place that would nourish and encourage. So the timer, I haven't heard the bell go off. This is good. Yeah, they, yeah this is a good group. I, um, so how about in 60 seconds or less, what are you doing now? And to clarify our club sport athletes, we have uh, re-entitled rugby to elegant violence, so d just not to <laughs> confuse anyone. So why don't we start with our professor. Um, so what am I doing now? I see some familiar faces out in the crowd. So I'm actually here at Denison um, on the faculty. I'm an assistant professor in the physics department. Um, so that's where, what I am now. I'm teaching classes, um, some intro physics, some, some other um, courses. I would have never met you at Denison. I was <laughs> you said teacher. you knew everybody. You I, I knew everybody, but I was not in the physics realm. I mean, that's just super smart. So as a student, I was a physics major. I spent a lot of time in Olin. I also still spend a lot of time in Olin. Um, <laughs> I try to get down to Mitchell every now and again. Um, I spent a little more time at Mitchell when I was a student sadly, um, but you might see me, my, my husband is on the um, athletics staff, he's an assistant professor and assistant athletic director, and he's been encouraging me to come down to Mitchell and work out, so I'm trying to get down there some more, and uh, you know, so if you see me embarrassing myself by, he makes me do things like TRX down there, and I look, I try to pretend like I'm still as fit as I once was, but... <laughs> We keep it Anyways, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough for me. I don't know which way to pass. Um, so I graduated from Denison in 94. I married a cute Denison lacrosse player who was two years younger than I was. Yeah, pretty much nailed it. Um, and then my, my sister also graduated from Denison and we got to play soccer together for one year. After Denison, I went to New York City. I was just a nice girl from Cincinnati went to Manhattan, worked for Bloomingdale's, I worked for um, Ralph Lauren Intimates, I worked for Calvin Klein Jeans, I ran a whole bunch of brands there. Um, Don Karen Intimates was my last gig there. Was in the city for 20 years and recently moved back to my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio with my sixth grade son, Hunter, and then I have twin girls in fourth grade. Um, I ran a company called Cycle Bar. Cycle Bar was an indoor cycling company that we ended up selling to private equity. Um, after I ran it for about three years. We had, or we had 326 locations sold, 125 open, and then recently my new job is Chief Operating Officer of a company called Corporex, which is a billion dollar privately held real estate development company where I run a sports and wellness division called Five Seasons, so. 
Happy to be back closer to campus. Woohoo! Go Big Red. So I graduated Denison and thought I was going to conquer the world, and I did. And but you I nailed it. and I nailed it. <laughs> I did it the long way, but I did it my way. I ended up going back to graduate school and got a another degree in literature, which was what my degree was in. And now I am a professor of humanities, and I have a coaching company where I help people learn to write better. So entrepreneurial. If you want to be uh, working on your own independently and you feel like you need a little extra coaching, that's where I come in. So that's what I'm doing now. And I am Marcy, her younger sister, who started the company with her for coaching. Um, so together, we call it an inspiration platform where we put dreams into action. So we have different demographics. Um, Allison is a writing coach and has phenomenal work with ghost writing and helping people write books and everything from getting started, what it takes to um, put your words into action. And then mine is executive coaching with the demographic of women in leadership in corporate America. I spend a lot of time with women who are really within that 18 months of having a, of a baby, um, a lot of returning back to work. Um, the work that I do, my favorite part about it is just removing the debate of what type of mom do I want to be? Do I want to be a working mom or stay-at-home mom? Because at this day and age, it doesn't matter. You just want to be you and you want to be great at it. And I think now is the best time for women to be successful in corporate America and in their careers. And there's a lot of opportunity for us to take, take the leadership on what a working parent's life could look like with a successful career and a successful family. Ray, again. Um, <laughs> when I graduated from Denison, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I was just like at home chilling for a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> ended up um, going to get my master's degree. So I got an MBA from Tiffin. I worked at Quicken Loans for a hot second doing um, an internship in mortgage banking. That was cool, but boo Michigan. Um, <laughs> Came back here, worked at Justice Retail for a little bit, worked at Discover Financial Services. I was kind of all over the place, but I knew I wanted to focus my industry in marketing. Kind of got into that from basketball because um, I, I met a couple guys here who did a scouting service and we kind of started our own thing and started going to a lot of the girls' high school basket basketball games here. <laughs> kind of making a name for ourselves and making a brand. So I'm like, this is what I want to do. I like the branding, the strategy aspect of getting that name out there. So that's what I've been focusing my career on now. I was most recently at um, Alliance State doing marketing and communications there. Um, other than that, I try to work out and stay fit. I do not play basketball anymore because I busted my knee playing with the team <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to chill on that for a little bit. But yeah, that's what I do. Hold on to that. Let's hold on to, no, yeah, Ray, hold on to uh, that mic because I think this next question uh, you can start with and we'll have the middle three start with the, since you are all um, college uh, varsity athletes, how did you know you wanted to be a college? Uh, you know, as, as we know, less than 1% of all high school uh, students um, not only have the physiological capability to compete in college, but have the desire, let alone persist. So how do you know you wanted to play college hoops? That's a good question. Um, so I started playing basketball probably when I was in middle school, like actually organized basketball, and I just fell in love with it. I used to play, I was a top boy, so I played with all the little boys in our neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, so so that's, better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I have two other brothers, so that probably helped. They beat me up a lot. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I think just I'm really competitive. So that was one thing. And then I just like the structure of it. Honestly, come, I didn't know what my basketball college experience was going to be like. And I almost quit. If you ask Coach Lee, I did almost quit for other that, reasons. That's the next question. Oh, <laughs> um, for other reasons, but I stuck with it. Um, really just my love of the game and just my competitive spirit is why I knew I wanted to be a college athlete. And playing in high school, I, I knew I wasn't done with it yet. So absolutely. if I could play for another four years, like absolutely I would do it. But that's why. 
Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> well, I also, I had four brothers that I had to keep up with, and we were a very active family, and I always was, you know, doing things, running around with my brothers, and we always played neighborhood games and things. Um, I started running, I started running track in junior high and, and high school. I didn't start hurdling, which became my primary event until I think my sophomore year oh my of high school. Um, and, but that really was my place where I was like, this is my thing. I really love hurdling. Um, my coach just decided I was a dancer as well. And he was like, oh, maybe, you know, running and the hurdles, it's kind of like, you know, dancing. I don't know. Anyways, it, it worked out um, that it became my event. And um, I, I don't, I don't know why I chose necessarily that I wanted to run in in college i just kind of knew it once i found my thing and i always you know yes the competition and the always being active it just was something i loved right you know i loved being in season um i also ran cross country in high school too which was kind of a little bit torturous for me as a sprinter hurdler um but i did it, it but in the end i was thankful for that experience i was also thankful for the um the camaraderie i feel like on the cross country team you know, we were a really tight knit group um, and, you know, I, I loved that experience and that aspect of it. But, you know, I just kind of I told you I put it in my high school yearbook. I knew I wanted to go to college and run track and be happy. And be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, the complex thought process that, that went on like right it. there. But yeah. <laughs> um, who here hates to lose? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who here has won a state title their senior year? OK. Most of us, that's amazing. I'm super jealous. <laughs> um, my last year in basketball, we were 20 and 0, and we lost to Versailles in the regional finals, and that blows. Um, so I knew my career wasn't going to be over because my last game was a loss, and I just, I, I, that, that's unacceptable. <laughs> Um, most of our last games will always be losses unless we're lucky enough to win an NCAC title or NCAA Division III title. Um, and there's something about the desire and the passion to keep going when the going gets tough. And so I, I can't imagine life without sports. It's defined who I am. It's defined my kids. It helps discipline us, right? Um, so right now I coach sixth grade boys select basketball and I'm the only badass woman Love select it. basketball coach um, and I coach my fourth grade girls select basketball team um, I just there is there's no place in my life without sports because it is a part of my DNA so I just knew I wanted to play college sports and our two individuals who played the the sport entitled elegant violence <laughs> why rugby I mean I, I think it's awesome but why rugby and you can Marcy, you can talk a little bit about that scrum. That yeah. was a great story. We awful. Well, do I need to be politically correct when I answer this question? <laughs> well, Patrick, are you going to edit? Is there a, are we editing? Yeah, OK. <laughs> no, I will say sports is, I mean, there's nothing better than being on a team, working together, having fun together. And my sister played club rugby. So four years later or five years later, I was definitely going to play all four years. And what I love most about it, it, it was pretty much co-ed, like the boys and girls practiced together. The boys and girls had a keg together afterwards. <laughs> there was a lot of, <laughs> oh, there, it is. <laughs> there was a lot of, um, Ring the bell on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's how we could do this. Um, no, but for me, I wanted to play a sport. I played every sport in high school. I did track, I was cheer, I was field hockey. We didn't have lacrosse then, I would have played lacrosse, but I just love playing sports. <laughs> and then when I came to Denison, I love the opportunity being here with club and being able to play two sports all four years. And with rugby itself, I love the challenge that it was such a man's sport. And all of us, I mean, you line up our rugby team and we were, you know, pearls and I mean, <laughs> bows and we were not a rugby looking team. And we play women's Columbus where they, the one girl took out her front teeth and we matched up for the scrum and they would just want to kill us because we were so like not rugby looking players. And so when we practiced our scrum, we would just crumble because we were so weak. But despite all the chiropractor and all that stuff, I would do it again in a heartbeat because it was so fun to be together and compete. I loved playing sports in high school as well. We grew up with a very athletic family and I loved the team spirit. I loved being part of the team. I loved that feeling that you had your teammates, everyone had each other's back. 
you were in it together. And someone had asked me if I wanted to play rugby, and I said, oh, okay. Now, you have to understand, I'm five foot one, so I'm not really a big person. <laughs> And so it is my now fun fact that I get to tell people. So as an adult, you know, once you're adulting, like after college, people will say, oh, give us a fun fact. And I'll yeah. say, well, I was the hooker on the rugby team. And they would the all look at me. That's so good. That's so good. Um, Heather, um, you mentioned earlier when we were chatting, um, you know, uh, and you related it to your business and just life after Denison, but the many different decision points we have as, um, uh, you know, individuals uh, up upon graduation. Uh, and uh, Ray, maybe you can speak up about this as well. Um, was there ever a time where you considered disengaging in this sport that was your very center, um, that was always a part of you? Um, and was there that, as we call, decision point in, in your life? Yeah, so I came here to be a two-sport athlete and I failed miserably. Um, I played soccer, I think we got there July 30th or something. I forget what the rules were back then. There probably were no rules. It's like where people didn't even have to wash their hands or <laughs> nobody had to wear seatbelts. But um, so I came, I want to say it was like July 30th. I came to campus. I was one of very few athletes coming to campus at the time. I don't think the percentage was 35% varsity sports. And um, my last basketball game, I'll never forget this, was February 23rd, 1990. And um, I remember feeling like that was a very intense year for me. And I was kind of battling, you know, how do I become the same girl I was in high school because the requirement is just different here, right? Um, even though this is Division Three, they really treat the athletes here like a very strong, you know, I would say not Division One, but very, very, uh, very um, competitive, competitive Division Two school where I was playing you know, soccer, fall and spring way back then. Um, it wasn't really that long ago. Um, and so it is, a, I, I quit a sport. I mean, which is something that I like live with every day because basketball is my favorite sport. It was a harder sport. It's a sport that I had to work harder at. It's a sport that I'm still passionate about. It's a sport that I'm still very close with my high school basketball coach. Um, and I'm still very close with my team. So it, it's something that I made a, decision on that probably is, is a regret in my book. Um, loved soccer. It was an easier sport. It was a shorter season. Um, and it was, it was the thing that, you know, I, I think I still hold most career goals and assists. I tie with somebody. But, um, you know, I was a great athlete. Yeah, but I got my cleats in the bag if she's up for a game. Um, <laughs> she would, if I told her, she would have slashed that other current player. I would have, um, I would have, if I would have come for alumni weekend, we wouldn't be tied. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> she's in the room. Not kidding. Yeah. I'm not. How about, Ray, you, you touched upon it uh, in your last comment. Yeah. So. so I had, in my time at Denison, I probably had two big times or major times where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So the first time was my freshman year. I think you come in freshman year and you might have like a bigger head than you probably should. So I just thought I was like all that at basketball and I felt like I put like a lot of work and I was really working hard on my game, but I didn't play. And that like just burned my, my soul. Oh. I, was just, I was really upset about it. So I'm like, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm working hard but I'm not playing. But then I stopped working hard, Coach Lee can account for that, because it was just kind of like, I don't care anymore. I'm not playing, so why even do it? Um, but like I said, I'm very competitive, and basketball was life, so I just... Sucked it up. Yeah, I sucked it up, really. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you're gonna play, so get over it. You're not playing right now, but you can play. And me and Coach Lee had a very long talk in her office one day. And she was just kind of like, you're not working, you stopped working hard. So that's oh, why you're that's not playing. Article. So that was that part. Um, and then my senior or junior year, I was dealing with some stuff at home. So I had lost somebody very close to me. And then I was having some issues at home with just like family stuff. And I was very distracted. And I felt like I needed to 
concentrate everything at home to get things like in order and get things in place. So my focus was not on basketball. And I was just like, I can't be in two places at the same time. I can't be here for my family and be at practice and be, you know, in class. So I actually did go to Coach Lee and I was like, I'm not playing this year. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I quit. So I quit for like a couple of days. Hot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quit for a couple just of days and just shoes back on. Yeah, like, and I was just, yeah, I'm just like on campus. I see my teammates. I'm like, hey guys, what's up? Like you could tell I just was not myself at the time. Clearly was not in my right mind. Um, and I had a couple of people. Does Rick still work here? He just retired. Oh well, Rick, that was my guy. He's the reason oh, why. Why? Yeah. Bring Rick back. Yeah, let's clap for Rick. <laughs> give, give him here. Round of applause. Yeah. So I talked to him, and he's like, "What's going on with you?" And I was like, "Well, I just quit the team because I got a lot of I got a lot of shit going on, so I can't." And he was like, "No." You're not quitting. <laughs> and I was like, but I did. I just told Coach Lee that I quit. And he was like, well, I'm going to go talk to her because you're not going to quit. So I was like, okay, cool. That's fine. <laughs> um, so then we talked again, and she let me back on the team. But I know now that if I did quit, that would have been the worst mistake that I ever made in my Denison career. So I'm super happy that I kept playing because I probably would have gone crazy, like, on campus just – walking around like I'm an athlete at Harvard born I mean I'm pretty built naturally well there's it. one article that but, I wanted but to shouldn't we give it up for coach Lee yeah, yeah. 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 For yeah. having a having a mentor that when you are losing your mind yeah. gives you a couple days he just reel me back in to, break reel me back uh, in understand. so yeah. there is a uh, article that I was sharing with the, the the group today that says why my parents what my parents made me do when I wanted to quit the team. Long story short, it goes on. This girl was a, a stellar athlete right out of middle school, like killing it, right? Um, she's a basketball player, and then she goes to, to varsity and she doesn't play, right? Which is a lot of us right here. We were killing it in high school, and then we come to college, and all of a sudden the the pool is bigger and it's harder to play and you've got to work harder, you've got to spend more time on it, all your friends are having fun, not saying they're partying, but maybe they're partying, and you want to go to the fraternity party, but you can't, you want to do this, but you can't, and you're kind of trying to make decision points. So what her parents made her do was they made her go talk to the coach. And I think that's the epitome of your story with Sarah is, and the coach gave some honest feedback in this article. I'll make sure Nan has it for everybody. But it was basically him saying, look, you're subpar. Like, you're weak. You're my weakest leak. When you have the ball on the court, you're a liability, right? How many of us have heard kind of this feedback, right? We've had feedback like this when we were probably in the fourth grade. Because good athletes get feedback early. And that's the one big piece of advice and direction I can give you as athletes. We've heard critical feedback early. Like, I just gave it to my daughter in the fourth grade game last week. I'm like, you're a ball handler. You got to demand the ball. It's two minutes left. You're the only one I want having the ball. Now, I do have a twin, so that didn't go over really well. Um, <laughs> but... But understanding that kind of pressure in an early situation is key. But going back to the relationship with your coach is critical. You're always going to have a coach in life. You're always going to have a mentor. You're always going to have a boss. You're always going to have a significant other. You're always going to have a wife. You're always going to have a husband. You're always going to have a sister. But that constant, like, direct feedback loop is really important. And it's what you do with the feedback that really makes you a champion, right? It's, you could crumble. I mean, if, if my coach ever said to me, you're not the person that I want to have the ball with the last two minutes to go or the last 20 seconds of the game, I would have freaked out. Um, but that happens. That's happened through all of our careers, right? And it will happen in business. So just understanding that feedback loop and accepting whatever they're going to give you on the other side, and then it's your choice to do with it whatever you want. She chose to come back. Um, us as athletes, us as people that don't like to lose, that's usually going to be our choice. And that's a big step in the right direction. And I believe in this article, uh, in, in the end, uh, she, she... She's like all conference. She's, you know, she persevered because he said, you have it in you. You have it in you, but you just have to give it patience. Like sometimes we just don't have patience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And, and, and patients to accept um, candid and, and real feedback um, and how you process that. So Allison, uh, maybe you could comment on some of the skills that you acquired um, through elegant violence or any other sport participation, even at the high school level, uh, that really impacted your life after college. So there's a lot of things, a lot of things that we learn when we compete. We learn our strengths, we learn our weaknesses, and we learn where our teammates' strengths and weaknesses are. And when we can match those up and we can get things aligned, that will put us one step farther. The same thing happens when you graduate, you find a job. The trick is to find the coach, find the mentor, find the person that's going to be your champion and let them help you. There is no shame in asking for help and there is no shame in celebrating the people that are winning next to you. So while we like to be the victors, it's also really fun to cheer our neighbors on and to be their champions because when we're champions together, we all win. And in the real world, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't have to be dog-eat-dog. -dog. We can actually do it together as a team. You will go farther. You will be more successful. It will also help you determine what you really want to do and how you want to spend your time. Because if you're tired of something and you're ready to move on, if you're tired, you, you can't do the two sports because it's just not possible anymore. And that's when you take stock of who you are and the values that you have and you press forward with what you do have. But you should always find that champion that can be in your corner, that can offer that advice. And then you also be the champion for somebody else. And that's how you're gonna win. That's, um, that's, that's great Wrap advice. Yeah, that's great <laughs> advice, yeah. And um, we have an individual with us uh, tonight, Julia Etteringham, she's a uh, senior, and she has been the football team's manager for four years, has been interested in, in uh, the sport industry, and um, has taken many courses in, in the Hess major, um, including uh, sport law, and um, so we took her to the NCAA convention, and she did that just that. She went to every program and every um, opportunity, networked, found ways to not only uh, guide herself, but also push every other student athlete. And, and she came back with all kinds of ideas that we could put forth within athletics. And she's a senior. And so someone with really, as they say, um, not a dog in the race, but went to bat and to uplift uh, all of the other um, men and women that she uh, she's really supported. So I think that's that's really special when when your own peer has that ability to push you forward. Um, Marcy, how about how about you? Well, I was thinking about it from an employer perspective because there are pretty much when you are hiring somebody straight from college or within say three years from college, you really are hiring them on their potential. There's no skill that you have from an internship just because you were exposed to work that somebody else was doing. There's not too much that's gonna differentiate one resume from another, but what does differentiate a person is what's inside. So I can look at two different resumes, go straight to the bottom, and I see somebody that competed four years at college, any level, D1, D2, D3, and club. And what I know is going to be a few things that are 100%. One, they are confident. Two, they are willing to work hard. We know the sacrifices that athletes make both physically, mentally, and emotionally to be winners on the field. And we also know that one of the hardest things that happens as an employer is when you invest in somebody, they join your team, you train them, you do all these great things, and then they leave after two years. And they typically leave because there's some sort of adversity that they can't see through. And when you hire an athlete, Every game, every practice, there's some sort of adversity and there's teammates being very honest with you on how you can be better. And you as a teammate, you expect your teammates to tell you the truth. So whether it's from the coach or from a teammate, we know as employers, this is a girl who has had tough conversations with their peers and they're gonna work through problems before it's so big and they wanna quit. And what I love from tonight is even when you're at the point of wanting to quit, 
there is an expectation of communicating with a greater audience, your coach, your boss, or whoever, to work through that decision to make sure it's the right decision. So for me, I love looking at athletes because you're gonna win. You're gonna win at whatever you do. And being tw in your 20s, plan on experimenting. It's great you don't know because it's, you know, you, you go through college and it's a time in your life that you really sure should explore what are the opportunities out there and don't limit yourself at all. Go for everything, go geographically, you know, go around the world if you want and take the risk to do it because you don't really know what you want until all of a sudden you start getting on that track and you're like, yeah, this is definitely what I like. And so to me, I think the one quote that's one of my favorite quotes is, be the girl who decides to go for it. Mel, how about you? Sure, so um, when I think back to my experience as a student athlete and you know, some of the, the things that really stand out to me in places where you know, I, I learned a lot or grew a lot are really times that I failed and failed miserably. And I mean, how many of us have let our team down or you know, like just really blew it on some occasions? And for me, I've, so I've got a couple of stories, right? So I mentioned I was a hurdler. And so when you're a hurdler, if you really blow it, you're gonna fall over a hurdle in a, you know, a championship meet or my, my one instance I'm thinking of, I was a junior in high school and it was a, the meet leading up to the state meet where if I would have just run like I ran any other meet the whole season, I was a shoe in and I hit a hurdle, I went down, DNF, did not finish. Um, and, yeah. and you know, it was one of those experiences where I had another race that there was the intermediate hurdles, the longer hurdles later in the day and I did not want to do it. It's like, nope, I can't do this. And again, through the mentoring, the coaching, my coach, my parents, I mean, you know, it's one of those where they pick me up and said, you got to do this. Just get back out there, go do it. And I did. And I reflect on that. I'm like, you know what? You know, I did not do that great in that race, but it didn't matter. It just mattered getting back out there and doing it again. The other, another instance that comes to mind is um, at Denison in the indoor conference meet, um, I was also a jumper and I knew I could have guaranteed points for the team if I just hit my mark and did a jump like I did every other meet, every other practice. And I scratched, I fouled on every single attempt. And Coach Pan, you know, I'm in the locker room and don't want to come out. And, you know, he coached me up and said, you know, got to get back. You have this many more events to do. Let's do it for the team. And so knowing that, um, you know, you can fail up and learn from failure was a big, a big thing I took away from my experience um, on the team and, and your teammates gathering around you and supporting each other to you know, help you get through those kinds of, of um, challenges. So, so learning how to learn from failures and knowing that you can do it and um, uh, you know, learning from your experiences. So. Great, great yeah. answer. And um, great answer. I think we call that uh, failing forward. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, as long as you're moving forward, you're, you're still ahead. Ray, um, what would you describe as the actual biggest, and Heather, you're next, oh biggest life skill you gained through your collegiate sport experience? Hmm. Uh, Tell your story. What, what, what was the biggest? What, what was the biggest life skill that's, that's say, really helping you now, maybe? or? Yeah, definitely. So I honestly did not think about this until Heather mentioned something before. And then I like my wheels started turning and I'm like, no, I do that all the time. So the critical feedback aspect is like very important because you will get that obviously in your workplace and mm -hmm. everywhere you go. And I think having an athlete's mindset, you take that in in your thought process. You're obviously like how you're going to respond to it. And that is the key. So in corporate America, obviously, I can't react the way that I would on the court for some, <laughs> you know, sometimes. But in basketball, when you make a mistake, you don't have a lot of time to dwell on it because the next play is happening yeah. right away. So you have to react right away. And I think I learned from that experience to be very solution focused in my job or in my um, career because there are things that happen at work every day. Um, and a lot of people will get hung up on like the little mistakes or some things that'll happen and it might be very big and they'll freak out at, about it and panic and everybody's like running around just going crazy, which that's just not my personality at all. Very like mild mannered. I would say I'm pretty chill. But um, so my reaction to it is always like, well, 
why are we complaining about the problem? Let's try to find a way to fix it. And I, yeah, it just, you made me think about that. Yeah, you're solution oriented, definitely Mm -hmm. that. Um, And then another thing that I learned, I went to a pretty diverse high school, so I interacted with a lot of different people and then coming to Denison, even the team was like a little bit more diverse. But I think that my experience here um, exposed me to a lot of different groups of people and people that I may not have interacted with if I did not play sports. So Agreed. just, yeah, so when you, you know, you go into the workplace and, and you learn to deal with a lot of different personalities, because we had a very, our team was full of personalities. <laughs> so you can attest to that. She might as well be Poor up here because I keep right. referencing her. Um, you learn to deal with a lot of different personalities and um, you learn one. how to talk to them. You learn how to communicate with people because everybody doesn't learn the same. You can't talk to everybody the same. You can yell at me on the court and scream at me, or you can be very nice to me, and I'll be fine. But other people do not react like that. So I definitely learned a lot of communications, communication skills as well, just being an athlete and playing with different people. Communication I would say those are and solution-oriented. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, those were great. Um, so for me, I was always a team leader. So I was always the captain. Um, I was the usually the person that got the ball when when the going was tough. And um, so for me, it was confidence. I mean, I think being a female in athletics, you build yourself a lot of confidence. Um, and we were talking about in the car, you know, sometimes that can be intimidating to other people. So I always tell funny jokes and I smile a lot so that nobody gets super intimidated. That translates obviously well into business. Um, the other thing is really when you lead a team, how you inspire others. So a great story about that is, you know, I played team sports, soccer and basketball. I wish I would have played lacrosse. Um, and, um, what happens is I could, if I was having a bad game or, or if somebody needed to get pulled up, right, if they were playing poorly, making mistakes or whatever, I could encourage them and I can get them to the level that they needed to be because I was that, I was that good of a leader. Um, but then when it came to, I think I had eight weeks off when I had my twins and it was March 26 when they were born and I seemed to be fine after my C-section, so why not try tennis? I mean, I had two extra weeks off. So I went to the pro at the club and I said, look, I've got two weeks. He's like, aren't you out on a seat section? I'm like, yeah, but that's okay. I was like, I was a college athlete, I got this. Um, so I learned to play tennis and that's when I learned a lot about being an individual sport person, which I really respect the person over here on my left, because in business, it's an individual sport game. Uh, it's not, a, it, it is a team sport, right? But your career is being propelled by you as an individual sport person. So what I learned about myself is I'm better in a team than I am not because I, I have to still, when I play tennis with old ladies, I have to wear baseball hats that say finish, finesse, and focus, not that I'm super competitive. And I do wear a sweatband because I get really sweaty. <laughs> I'm not on my head, I'm just working. I wear it over here, but I, I, you know, being a team sport versus an individual sport person, you learn so much about yourself. Um, and so I've been privileged to develop teams my whole career, and it's something I'm just really passionate about. Um, so that's, I think, my biggest lesson. That's a, that's a great answer. And Jamie, um, she might have a few years of eligibility left. Oh, good. Perfect. I'm, I'm getting my racket back together. <laughs> so. Allison, um, you know, we're celebrating girls and women in sport. We play for the North Coast Athletic Conference as, um, yes, everyone did when they were here. The conference was origin, original, originated um, in 1984. Um, and it was the first, one of the first uh, conferences in the country that were, was um, developed with men and women at the same time. Even the Ivy League had the men and then the women were brought in and so on and so forth. So it was based on equity and um, academic excellence and it's been a, 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 a shining um, conference. But as Coach Lee will tell you, we've had enormous amount of growth. I uh, took my first job in the conference in 1985 and a few years after that was asked to serve in an administrative role. So my first um, conference meeting, 
I came to, at that time, there were like eight member institutions, now we have 10, and um, I was the only woman in the room, and they asked me to sit in the back just to observe. Yeah. So I could kind of grasp this rocket science. It wasn't physics. No. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I, I think my lesson from that, um, were many, um, but uh, it is important to have a seat at the table, number one. But I, I guess my question to you is, um, have you ever experienced any type of uh, gender bias in the workplace, and how um, was your uh, sport or competitive nature, um, perhaps even athleticism, if you had to push someone out of the way, um, help you uh, navigate um, that challenge? It's an interesting question to answer. It, it is, it is. I, I don't feel like I had a whole bunch of gender bias, but part of that I do believe is because I would ask people. I was curious, I wanted to learn, and I allowed myself to get involved. I would volunteer for positions within the company that were not necessarily part of my job description. I would volunteer for some of the extracurricular activities that they would offer. But I would, again, I mentioned finding your champion. So I would find my champions within that workplace and those, they had my back. So I just don't think that I allowed anything to cloud my peripheral view of my potential because I knew what my potential was and I knew where I could go. And somebody might have thought negatively of me, but I never let that stop me and so I just kept marching forward. I would find my goal and I would walk towards it. And I just maintained that same path for my entire career. I am fortunate now that I work a lot with women and I have met so many strong women. And a good portion of them are athletes and it's probably because like people are attracted to like people. But that's, that's the trick is you stay focused you don't allow the peripheral to cloud your vision. Don't allow someone else's opinion of you get in the way. And you know what you're capable of and you just keep marching forward because you know that you're gonna make that goal. Great answer, unbelievable answer. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Lott, um, physics is sort of like, definitely a, you know, an all woman uh, field to get into. Um, how, about, how about you uh, in choosing or actually progressing, progressing in the field of physics. Sure. So I guess um, sort of starting well, earlier, not a Denison, <laughs> not a right? No. <laughs> yeah. I guess um, sometimes when I reflect on it, sometimes when I think about um, you know, why I've stayed in physics for a long time or even decided to pursue physics, um, first of all, I'm, a, I'm stubborn. Um, and if you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to show you that I can. Um, I have been for a long time, probably starting back when I was competing with my brothers. Yeah. Um, so that's thing one. But it, you know, in mm -hmm. facing small little micro things throughout the time, going through graduate school or things like that, and having little bits of <coughs> self doubt that might pop up when you know you tell somebody that you're a physicist and they're like, you don't look like a physicist. What are you talking about? Um, and just maybe some of that self doubt might creep in, like, huh, maybe they're kind of right. Um, but in the end, um, maybe you know, a big thing that I learned through my participation in athletics, and, and you mentioned the individual sport thing, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not in, in track, you're not often in um, you know, a situation where there's a lot of uncertainty and having to adapt a lot. You know, it's much more, <laughs> you're in your lane mm -hmm. and it's you competing against yourself. Um, so, but learning, maybe even through my participation in cross country, how to break things down into smaller parts and, you know, right, achieve right. Some, some overall goal that's well off into the future and how to break it down. And it's a, a skill that, you know, you can apply to many facets in life and in your career if you have a goal, how to chunk it down into smaller parts and achieve it. And then, you know, you're letting your results do the talking for you. Um, so, you know, finding, finding your way and knowing that you can do it and um, bringing it down into smaller parts. Um, and I also understand that you had a pretty, uh, pretty strong mentor model uh, in undergrad. Who, I, I forget the name of that. What was her name? Uh, well, so 
when I was a student, the now provost, Dr. Kim Copeland, was my um, professor, and she was a wonderful role model for me. I was just t telling the story over dinner how um, I remember when I was a sophomore in college, sitting in her office and looking around me like, wow, this would be amazing. I would love to be Dr. Copeland. And so, um, you know, so having a great, having someone like that to see, hey, she can do it. I have her as a role model and, um, you know, someone Does I can look Does she do up. hurdles? <laughs> can she sprint? <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. Her great husband answer. and daughter are right, right there. So. Um, well, um, you know, uh, we're, we're running, uh, we're, we're kind of running hard, but uh, if you have any other points, but we really want to open this up to um, just questions that you might have, um, you know, a anything at all that might, might help you. I mean, a as, as you can see, You've got a panel of badass rock stars. Oh, yeah. Please ask them anything that, that you'd like at this time. Any questions? I'll even be the mic runner. Unless I call on you. Any questions? Any? How about you, Coach Lee? You want to ask Ray? <laughs> Any question? Ah! <laughs> you, the, Oh. <laughs> Questions? Any um, ending comments? Oh, oh questions, yay! You, yeah. You, you pack your pocket with snacks, because you're the brave one. Oh, okay. Do you need the mic? Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, so for me, I was one of the uh, founding soccer teams. Um, we had our first NC, well, we, we beat OWU, which was our big competition back at the time, three years in a row. And we were the first team to be flown to Hobart Williams Smith to play the NCAA, we got into the finals. I mean, we got into the, whatever, the Sweet 16, which was like a big frickin' deal back in the 90s. Um, I was wearing spandex before they were cool, before Lululemon came out, and I was wearing a baseball hat, nobody knew what my hair color was, and a proud Denison, you know, university sweatshirt, so I don't look very different than you guys did, but that was probably by far, and then when I came to see Coach Gale and the soccer team, to see the, the playroom that they're in and to see our, I'm mean, like gonna get upset, like just even thinking about it, um, to see their end of year video and just to know how special what you guys are in right now is just such a special time. If you're on this panel, you're a has-been, right? So <laughs> like you're not, like you're on the field, you're on the court all the time and you know, um, just don't have any regrets on that last play, on that last, on that last time, um, but that was, I know for me, that was a really proud moment because we started the legacy of soccer. That was my year, so it was a big deal. Um, for me, I would say, even though I did not play that much my freshman year, I had a great time sometimes sitting on the bench because that is when I met like one of my best friends to this day. I was just in her wedding last year. We would sit at the end of the bench. Coach Lee does not know this, so she will find out today. <laughs> I put candy in my water bottle because I knew I wasn't getting into the game. So <laughs> I would eat Skittles, I had Starburst, and I'm like passing them down. And then, you know, those every once in a Everyone's while. Everyone's like, where's Ray's water? Where's right. Ray's water? Yeah, so every once in a while, when it's That's like a couple there. minutes left in the game, and I got Skittles in my mouth, Coach Lee's like, right, come on. I'm like, Damn, today? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like today of all days. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, give me give me my water, Alicia. You don't have water. So that was one. And then I would say my junior year was another time where we had like a our team we just had a lot of fun as a team. We really loved hanging out with each other. Like, obviously, you spend how many hours at so Mitchell? Many hours. But then we would go back and eat together and do homework together. So, literally, saw them like 24 7. And that was the best season we had. We went 28 and 0 in the regular season, 
Then we got blew out the first round of the tournament. I which oh, was it? Hope is that? Um, yeah, it was hope. Which that I, I don't want to talk about that. Don't but, can't. <laughs> yeah, so we just had so much fun that season. Like we just love each other as a team, and I mean, I still talk to all of them today. So. so, if I'm not mistaken, Marcy and Allison, what are the first goals of your business? Is that word fun in them? <laughs> or the bullet points? Yes. Yes. So. so our business, which is geared around coaching and helping women to learn to thrive with who they are and do it in a really fun, lively way. Because life is worth celebrating yes. and that's what it is. So when you're on the field, you're celebrating victories. And if you don't have that victory and it kind of feels bad, if you've played your very hardest, you absolutely know that you can still celebrate because that's really what it's about. Just don't drink your Skittles. Don't, no. not, not a good, no, yeah. Chew them, chew them first. Yeah. Yeah. So you know those teammates in high school that were on your team because their parents were making them play and they complained about every practice and they just lowered the bar and they really weren't that fun to play with even if they were good athletes. The coolest part about being a college athlete is you're only around people that really are going for it. They're working hard, they're showing up for you, and then you're celebrating, you're having fun, you know, traveling to games, you're doing all that great stuff. Well, when Alice and I launched this business, we're like, we want people to revel in their careers. We want them to have so much fun. And when you're looking for the career you want, your intuition should be just like the team. So you wanna find a company that's like, yeah, I can hang out with these people off hours. Yeah, I can learn from these people. You wanna be surrounded by people not like that high school person I was share, sharing that's on your team that lowered the bar. If, if it doesn't feel right with the person that's interviewing you or the people that you know that work there, just think of the experience you're having right now and you just want that to continue through life because life should be fun. Career, you know, being a college athlete could be really stressful and could be really over the top or you could have a blast while you're winning. So it's really your choice in how you live life. So we love working with college athletes. I'm so proud to be here because you know, I have three children that are very competitive athletes, so they don't think mom is an athlete because she only played club. <laughs> so I took a picture of the panel. I did show them <laughs> that I really did play. But what is so nice, because I know how hard my children are working to be competitive in sports, and I'm sure your high school experience was like that, and it's carrying through, and you're building a foundation of your character and who you are, and it is guaranteed to provide success for you. Question. Yes. You need the mic. I play field hockey. Um, so going off of your point that you just made, what kind of like life lessons did you learn from when you weren't actually playing? So from those times where you were on the bench constantly, like what did you get out of it that you couldn't really see at that time? I smartest girl in the room yeah, right here. Yeah, smartest, smartest, more snacks for her. <laughs> I would say just um, a big lesson was like not to quit just because it got hard and things were not going my way per se. So like I, and that was in the beginning of the season. I'll say first half of the season is when I was miserable for lack of a better term. But second half of the season, I really allowed myself to start having fun and I came back, honestly, not just for myself, but I started to make a lot of friends on the team. So that was really great. And I'm not one that likes to be let down and I don't like to let other people down either. So <clears throat> I'm building all these relationships and if I would have quit the team, I would have let my friends down. And I probably wouldn't have got to hang out with them a lot. So that was like a big thing for me, but really just like not to quit. Like you're, I'm, I'm an athlete at heart, that's my, <clears throat> Sorry. Um, just that mindset of just because this is tough right now, it's not going your way. And the same thing will happen in your career, honestly. So um, things are tough. They're not always going to go your way, but you got to keep like chipping at it because eventually it's going to hit. Like just keep that mindset. I would say that's big, and I'm I'm learning that now in my in my professional career. Just like I said, it's not it's not going to be easy, and I knew that. But I came in thinking like. I'm about to play, of course, and that was not the case. So, um, yeah, like it's not going to be easy, but don't give up because 
there's going to be a reward at the end. And that is what I learned, honestly. And that experience is helping me now, like I said, in my professional career. So I just kind of keep that at top of mind every day now, especially. And, you know, I think one of the rewards as the old timer here is to, um, and this is for the men and the women in the room, is that the prize at the end of the day are the relationships that you build. And those friendships that you have far outweigh um, the wins. Um, Aww, now they're, okay, yeah, stop touching. Okay, far, far outweigh the wins and really uh, enhance the experience. And we talked about it earlier, um, how interesting it is while we were in at di different years in schools, perhaps different generations, uh, so many of this, uh, the experiences overlap. And, um, and so that, that's something to, to take with us. And when you meet a Denisonian, um, hopefully they will all have your back. Always. Any other questions? Yes. Um, Shout it out. How about, how about Dr. Well, Lott? Dr. Lott or Heather? Yeah. Um, Are you good? What is the one thing I learned that I wish I would have known now? Well, we talked about it today, you know, um, networking and, and really the confidence that you can bring off your fields into whatever it is that you want. Um, but I don't know. Let's see. Um, Life's all about, it's not just career perseverance. I mean, <coughs> life sucks sometimes, right? People get sick that you love. You don't have kids when you want. Timing's not everything. You're all athletes, so you're very impatient. You like immediate gratification. And the shit doesn't happen the way you want it, like in business, right? Um, so for me, I wish somebody probably would have said, you need a little patience. Um, as a really good high school athlete and a very good college athlete, things came natural to me. Um, I didn't have a lot of obstacles to overcome. And it's not until life really hits you where you have space and you're outside of this Denison great bubble that we live in that you really find adversity. And I, I always thought because things were easy for me that everything would be easy and that's just not how it is. So. For me, it would have been a lot more patience. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna jump in here. Is be kind to yourself. Oh, yeah. Go be on. kind to yourself. Life is a journey. And it might have started for you on the athletic field when you were five years old. And it's gonna keep going as long as you keep at it. It's a journey, but be kind to yourself. If you don't get it the first time, that's okay. You step back, you try again. What happens if you don't kick the ball into the net the first time? You step back, you do it again. You keep at it, you keep practicing, but be kind to yourself. It's not gonna happen the first time. And if it does happen the first time, count yourself lucky. And the next time, if it doesn't happen, that's okay, because you're gonna just keep at it. Yeah, mine's similar in the sense that um, so I, I've always been a perfectionist and, you know, to tell myself that it's okay to make mistakes and, you know, um, not to take everything so seriously and, um, you know, having some more fun. Um, exactly. And, you know, these kinds of things that, it, and then I think that that would allow me to take some more risks too, um, right? If you're not always worried about everything being perfect, then it allows you to open up and take more risks and learn from those failures. Um, and there is research out there that shows that in, women generally are more cautious about things and less apt to take risks. And I think, you know, part of that with me, it's a work in progress still, right? Being, having that confidence to be like, okay, it's okay if it's not perfect, just do it, right? And then if it's, if it's good or great, that's better than not doing it, mm -hmm. right? So having the confidence, just take that first step, take risks. Yeah, I would say for me, um, the biggest lesson that I learned was you don't have to have it all figured out right now. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, when I graduated, I was in a panic mode because I really had no idea what I wanted to do. And 
my peers around me were very set in their careers. So we had like, he was a biochemist. He knew he was going into biology. I told you about my friend who was an athletic trainer. I had a friend who wanted to be a doctor. And I'm just like, well, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. And it just kind of put me in a mood. So I just took that time to reflect. But what I will say is I learned a lot from the experiences that I did not have a lot of fun in or jobs that I did not like, just brought me closer to what I really wanted to do or I'm learning certain aspects of this. So like I said, I got into the marketing thing from basketball, which I love basketball. So I started to find um, different jobs where I could just get a more well-rounded experience in there. So at one of the, my jobs that I absolutely hated, I got a lot of research experience there. Another job I got some financial experience there and then um, the strategy aspect of it. So I would just say, you do not have to have it all figured out and don't panic if you don't figure it out, if you don't figure it out right away because you're gonna learn it and you're probably gonna learn something like really, really great about yourself, which is what is happening with me right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say that I for sure. That. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mar Marcy, I'll, I'll have you comment, but Ray, that just reminds me of um, how we define the liberal arts. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're using all of mm -hmm. the skills and um, you are able to think on your own and you're able to uh, work through and you've had some different experiences. Yeah. Um, Marcy? Yeah, for me, I, I love what everybody has said. You know, like the be kind to yourself. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves in general. In college, it is your time to explore opportunities and try different things and take risks and do all that. So I, I absolutely love what you all have said. And you have to understand if any, does anyone have any parents or older siblings that graduate from Denison? Like the, those of you that are raising your hand, you know what this is, hi. <laughs> so Lily, Lily's mom, <laughs> I was looking for you. All right, so Lily's mom, um, she graduated with Heather and me in 1994. So we were so happy you were at Denison, <laughs> yay. And your mom sent me the coolest text for advice we need to give the group about um, why sports is so important in life. Um, but <laughs> and what, what is that? So her grandmother is always asking her mom, her mom, like she was four years varsity um, lacrosse and then she coaches lacrosse and she's really competitive, super fun, just a great, great leader and woman and everything. And her grandmother is always like, you know, Christy, why are you spending so much time with your kids in sports? Because they're not going to play professional. I don't know why you'd want to do all this stuff. Lily might, Lily might play professional. <laughs> Um, but she was like, Mom, sports is everything. It builds your character, it builds your confidence, it's your teamwork, it's life, and you're more successful as an athlete. So she's like, make sure you tell all the students that. Yeah. 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 Call home. yeah. Text home. Text home. So the only thing I was going to say, I just want to make sure you guys know, the Denison Network is like no other network at, you'll ever find in life. So be very confident. It is fine. You don't know what you want to do. You know, by the time you're 24, 25, you'll start figuring it out. You can call any Denison alumni that you can find that's featured in the magazine, that you find on LinkedIn, that you find as a neighbor, you go to any of the Denison, Denison, anywhere um, events that happen, everyone wants to open a door for you. So just ask. You have to know that your degree is a best friend with anybody else that shares that same degree. So go confident that you graduate from Denison and we'll help you whenever you need it. How about a... Uh how about a big uh, round of applause for our um, badass rock stars?